morning, people. Welcome, welcome back. Today, I have a really exciting video because we are gonna talk about self-care and I am gonna show you a self-care ritual that I don't think you'll find anywhere else. Ah, mocha, I love mocha. In this ritual, we are going to mesh parts work, magic, energy working, writing as forms of self-care. And it is super easy. All you need is yourself, your body, your hands, and your writing utensil. I feel like writing by hand has that kind of mental help as well. But if you prefer to type or writing on your phone is more accessible, then by all means, do what works for you. So for this self-care ritual, we are going to connect with the part that needs the care, the part that needs that healing that you're coming to a self-care ritual for. This could be the perfectionist part. This could be the anxiety part. This could be an obsessive thoughts part. This could be the not good enough, feeling not good enough, not worthy part. It can be a wide variety of things. First step is addressing why you are here, why you are burnt out in need of that extra medicine, that extra self-care. And we are going to specifically work with that part. It can be more than one part, so go ahead and do this for all the parts that are coming up for you at the time. Sometimes this is easier said than done, like figuring out what parts are showing up, especially if you've been detached for a long time, like I was, and you know, recognizing what's showing up is even hard. Then I would just say, do the meditation, do the writing, like do this ritual, see what comes up. And that could be like any sort of vague feeling as well. It doesn't need to be a specific part. Connect with that. Let me take you through this. So once you kind of acknowledge what feeling you're connecting to, what ideas are coming up and things like that, let's try to connect more to that part. So we are going to close our eyes, you know, try to sit up straight <laughs> and breathe deeper actually have some like full belly breaths. With our eyes closed, we are going to ask that part for permission. So we'll say something like, hi anxious part, I am hoping to connect with you. Is that okay? Or may I connect with you? Can I connect with you? Is that okay with you? So if you get that yes, uh, go ahead and connect. If you get that no, that also could be a part. Maybe ask that fearful part or wherever that no is coming from. Ask that part, oh, is it okay if you step aside and I can connect with this part? If all of these are leading to a no, that is completely okay. Skip this step and go to the next step. You can definitely do this without the parts work at the beginning. I just find it enhances everything, the self-care part a lot more when you know what part needs your care. Going back to the parts work, let's say you get your permission, right? Then you connect with that part. You say, okay, part, I am connecting with you now. Please share with me what you need to share, what you want me to know. And then you listen, you see what comes up for you. You thank that part. Oh, also something I love doing is wherever I'm feeling this part, because it's always manifests as physical feelings in the body. Um, if it's heaviness in my chest, I'll put my hands there. And then I'll talk to the part and hold the part in that way. So yeah, always ask for permission. Always say thank you. After you listen to what they have to say, thank them for their message. Tell them it's okay. Tell them what they need to hear and hold them if that feels good for you. Honestly, I can't really tell you what to do with the part at this situation because it's gonna vary so much from person to person, but basically you wanna give them love. At the end of the day, it comes down to love. So however you feel like you can give that part love, your love and attention, do it. It could look like affection, it could look like acknowledging with words. It could look like giving it a hug or doing something for it. Being like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna do this for you. And actually you can even tell them that this ritual that you're about to take part in 
is for you, to help you. And then you can disconnect with them. You can even tell them that you're gonna visit again and to even join in on this ritual that you're doing to help them. If you do make a promise like speaking to that part again, make sure you keep that promise. Then we can go into the ritual after we've connected acknowledged and invited that part in and tell them you're doing this for them, for their healing and to show them love and grace. And then the other part of the ritual, sometimes I like to add in a little candle, a little pink candle that I light, like a ritual candle or any other altar candle if I'm doing it at the altar, which I definitely recommend doing it at a sacred space, space where you constantly work energy at so that it's just easier to get into these mindsets and get into the energy working. Basically, you're going to rub your palms together and build up energy. And you're gonna do this with so much love and compassion in your heart. So think of it from the heart space going into your palms. And this sounds really like silly, but if you do it with your full intention, with truly from the heart, truly feeling like so much love for your part, for yourself, it will work. You will feel that love. You may not be ready for that and that is totally okay. There's no shame in that. The world is a hard place. So absolutely no shame here. Uh, if you aren't ready for that step, then just rub your hands and put in energy. That is also good. But if you can tap into that, just true heart center love energy, for this part, it'll be great. So this literally looks like rubbing your hands, closing your eyes and imagining energy from your heart. I imagine it from my heart. Maybe you feel that love energy somewhere else. That's totally fine too. But from your heart, extending into your palms as you're rubbing your hands. And then just feel your love for that part, that wounded part. Feel that love, feel that love that it deserves. And now we are going to extend that energy out into a free write. So with that energy in your palms, you grab your pen. You imagine that energy extending from your palm into your fingers into the pen. With the other hand, you hold the book, you hold the palm, uh, the palm. You hold the page, you hold the book, you let the energy go into the book. For three pages, you are gonna be free writing. Also, I wanna add, I do say three pages, but have grace with yourself if you're not in the space to write three pages. I know with myself, I have ADHD, sometimes it's impossible, literally impossible to write that amount. And sometimes it is literally impossible to write less than three pages <laughs> or not write over three pages. So very much depends on where you're at and how you're feeling. I just recommend three pages because I think it helps to get out of your head. But if right now you're not at that capacity, remember this is a self-care ritual. We are giving ourselves grace and love. So do what feels right. This is not work. This is supposed to be an act of love. So always come back to what you need and what feels right for you. Now, the free write can look like a lot of things and all of those things are amazing. It could look like processing negative beliefs, negative emotions, negative experiences. It could look like having uh, divinatory downloads, like um, kind of divining in a way. It could look like the part just coming out and saying all its fears. It could look like just pouring love into this page for yourself for that part. It really can look like anything. If you're stuck, just start writing random words and let it flow out of you. Don't think too much. This is a free write just to see what comes out. And then afterwards, you can either burn these pa pages if it feels like pages to burn. If it feels like a love letter, if you feel like you want to keep it close, Maybe keep it, stash it somewhere special, put some herbs on it. This is where your own magic can come into it. You could put it in a manifestation box if that feels the most appropriate. Whatever comes out of the free write, 
do what feels right. And sometimes I even just leave it in, in my journals as like sacred pages in the journals. Do what you need to to make this feel sacred and ritualistic, whether that's like dressing in a certain way or lighting those ritual candles, like I said, whatever you need to do to get into that, this is sacred and this is a ritual mind space. Beyond that, it is really simple. It's connecting with the part, if that applies to you, if not, that's okay. Drawing energy of love into your palms, extending that love onto the page and seeing what happens. And again, it doesn't have to be love energy. It could just be your own energy. It's a free write at the end of the day. That's all it is. But our goal is to process or figure something out, or release something that needs to be released while also specifically working with the part that needs this extra self-love. Because at the end of the day, these whole self-love rituals and needing self-love, self-healing rituals this badly shows how traumatic our lives are in this system and shows how much harm is being perpetuated and how much violence is being acted upon all of us because really the medicine is within us. There is always medicine outside of us to help us when we're really struggling, but it's not supposed to be like always needing to pour in love, it's supposed to just inherently be within us. So obviously, since we're not inherently feeling it within us, we need to pour that back in. We need to remind ourselves and talk to those wounded parts and pour it into them. So I hope that made sense. I hope you find this helpful. Please let me know if you try this out. I would love to hear how it goes. That is my self-care ritual for you. If you have any questions, always feel free to ask. If you'd like to work one-on-one -on -one with me where we can do this kind of part work and tarot reading, uh, please see my services in the description box below. I am not a trained therapist, just as a disclaimer. I've only had mentorship training before. I simply just do the things that I do here, magical stuff, tarot readings, things like that. Though I am a deep, deep listener. I always have been. That is one of my superpowers, along with the ability to forgive, which comes from my deep listening. And, you know, sometimes through these writing sessions, we can even figure out those things that are our superpowers that we've been taught or weaknesses. I've always been told that the way I can forgive anyone is a big weakness but i found it does come from just my ability to listen to fully observe and to know like deeper it takes a lot of strength to forgive that was a random little side note <laughs> but yeah that's me i'm i'm someone who's here to forgive and deeply listen and observe so if that is of interest to you, I will leave my website below. I am offering $10 readings for a limited time. Any support there supports the channel and supports me. Thank you so much for any support. Thank you so much for watching. I wish you an amazing day and I will see you tomorrow.